Chairman, welcome again. Only one place to start, isn't there, really, with the, the trophy there sat behind you. How does it feel to have finally won that and completed the trouble? <laughs> you know, it feels... Uh, I was actually chatting with Pep late this morning. Relief. Relief. It reminds me, winning this, uh, it reminds me back to... Uh, 2011-12, that QPR game, the first Premier League. There was relief in that game and then happiness. With the Champions League, we've tried so hard for so many years, you know that. And then to finally uh, finally do it last night, the first, I'll say a couple of hours, even until now, it's, it's relief. It's happiness, but it's really more relief. We finally have that trophy right here. And how special was it that Sheikh Mansour was here to see his team win that trophy? You know, the, the most special. I mean, it's, uh, it's an incredible, you know, for Sheikh Mansour, given everything he has given to this club, given uh, all the commitment, uh, you know, years of, of support, uh, love, he's given passion to the club and to, uh, at the pinnacle of the final of the Champions League, to be here, to be able to attend it. He has so much love for this club. And uh, working with him over the last 15 years as part of um, City Football Group, he deserves this, he really does. And uh, I'm so happy he was there yesterday. It felt like, a, in, in the Champions League, it felt like a really sort of coming of age season, this, if you like. I think we went 26 game, or we've gone 26 games unbeaten at home in, in the competition. Do you feel like we've now finally grown in, after all these years of, of trying, finally grown into the competition, that there's a sense of, yeah, we belong here and we're comfortable here now? Well, we're arguably one of the most consistent teams in the Champions League for the last 10 years. Uh, consistently uh, in the group stages, consistently going forward. And if you look at just the last five years, quarterfinals, quarterfinals, final, semifinals, finals, and winning. So there's a consistency in our performances in the Champions League. I think as a team, we are we're very mature as an organization, very mature as a club overall. I think our fans, one of the great things, particularly this season I found, is how the fans have embraced the Champions League. The atmosphere at the Etihad this year, really, and I think it's something for all of us to take for the future, it's become truly a fortress. What the fans give to the team spills over in the performances. And if you look at, you know, Real Madrid semifinals, 4-0, uh, Bayern Munich quarterfinals, 3-0, uh, Leipzig round of 16, 7-0. And, and I hope and I wish that we can just take this now to another level. We are, you know, the Etihad is becoming what we always hoped for, which is truly uh, the 12th man we always needed, and the players appreciate it, the coaches appreciate it, we appreciate it, uh, the management team. Thank you, really, thank you to the fans for that. And um, exciting times, exciting times. And if we move to this trophy, I think it's over my right shoulder, uh, um, in terms of the Premier League, it's, you know, yeah. it's three out of three, five out of six, and in the last decade, six wins, two seconds, one third and one fourth. How, pr how proud are you? I mean, you touched on it just then, but mm. how proud are you of that record? It's an era, isn't it? It's, it's, era. The, it's actually the record I'm most proud of because it's a, it's a testament to everything we're doing and all the hard work um, that this, this club and every, every employee, everyone associated with the club, I think is, is so proud of because there was the UEFA dinner on Friday night and uh, I was asked a similar question, what's, what's so special about, about Manchester City and about this group? And I said, it's that the winning mentality, this winning mentality that produces the consistency you've just described, year in, year out, not for one year, not for two years, not for three years, 10 years across every competition, every competition we play in, at every level, we play to win. We play to win and that play to win applies to everyone. It's the players, it's the coaching staff, it's the physios, it's the management, uh, uh, the commercial guys, 
it's the uh, receptionists, it's the, uh, the folks at the kitchens, it's the media team, it's the digital team. Every individual associated with this, with this club, with this group, I think share that, uh, that passion, that commitment. And it's remarkable, and I mean, we've done the double, forget the treble, no, we won't forget it, but yeah. put the treble to one side, we've done the double twice in five years and kind of puts it in some kind of perspective. We're building a legacy for this club, a new modern legacy. And this modern legacy is in the, is in the modern Premier League. And it's, it's the last 10 years, it's the last 15 years. And I think in that, what Manchester City continues to achieve, you know, today the treble, is, you know, the, the treble achieved, only been achieved once. And it's not only been achieved once because this is the, the really the most difficult thing to possibly achieve in the world of football. To win the most difficult league in the world, the Premier League, and to win the most difficult competition in world of, uh, the world of sports, in my view, the Champions League, at the same time, combined with another cup competition, a great historic cup competition, the FA Cup, at the same time. It, it is incredibly, incredibly, which is why it's only been done once 24 years ago. And now this team has achieved that. And this team has achieved that against incredible competition in the Premier League from 19 teams that are, as a group, the most competitive league in the world. And then to go in the Champions League and to do so in a run, beating the defending champions, Real Madrid, beating, you know, in the final, an incredible team uh, in Ter Milan, uh, who had an incredible run to get to the final. And then beating also Bayern Munich. Uh, it's not like we had an easy run to the Champions League final. You know, we did it the hard way. And we did it with, with, uh, with the highest level of, uh, of football that I think I've ever seen. So all in all, uh, that treble, now you combine it with what you said, which is three in a row. And by the way, five and six, consistency. Consistency and it's, uh, you know, the Premier League is always, I think, the, the foundation to, to any success. You, you, have to, you have to win the Premier League. And I suppose the obvious question there is, how do you top it? <laughs> or is this just the beginning? Well, you always can top it because, you know, the future is the future and uh, records are records and, and we, as we've done every year, we keep building this legacy and building this incredible le le legacy every year with new, new achievements, new records, uh, consistency. Uh, you look at next season and guess what? Look what we have next year. Look what we have this summer. We have the Charity Shield. We have the Super Cup. We have the Club World Cup. The Club World Cup, for the first time, this club is going to be competing in the Super Cup and the Club World Cup. And, and we, want to, we want to win these. We want to win these and we want to add them to the, to the history of the great, this great club, to the legacy of this great club. And uh, everything we do is, is setting new, new records and, and, uh, and new standards. Today I'm, I'm speaking to you. It's amazing, but uh, I'm already thinking about next year. <laughs> Even yesterday, I think, uh, you know, there's a joke with, between me and... Uh, Ferran and uh, Chiki and, and Pep when we had, had our moment. We looked at each other and it was, okay, mm. now we've got to do it again. But there might be a quintuple next year with the other two trophies you mentioned. Um, I mean, we obviously need to talk about the main man, don't we, Pep? He's, he's probably made all this possible in the last few years. How important for the club, the players, was it to have him extend his contract when he did? It was very important because... He's such an important part of this club. He's an incredible, incredible uh, leader. Uh, I knew where Pep's heart was I, and I knew where his mind was. Uh, so I think I was never really concerned. We've had these conversations before. Uh, it was always, but the timing was important. The timing was always very important because it, um, it gave clarity. How indicative is it then of the environment that has been created around him that he's spent seven seasons in Manchester? Well, it shows you the environment uh, that we have, which is a special environment. Uh, and the environment, every one of us plays a part of this. It's not just the management team, it's not just the, the players, it's not just the coaching staff. It's the city, it's the fans, it's the people. That entire ecosystem, it's a lifestyle decision, 
It's a personal decision. It's a human decision. It's a coaching decision for sure from him from a professional standpoint. But it's all of that. Uh, and I think what we all provide for, for, for Pep is, is all of that. And, and, and that's what's kept him, kept him this long. And talking of champions, 12 months ago we, we chatted about one young champion, Erling Haaland. And you told me, I don't think I'm uh, spoiling a confidence here, you told me privately about a conversation you had on the telephone with yes. him. And I can now reveal that I think he said to you, I know why you've bought me, Chairman. Yeah. You've bought me to win the Champions League. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, a, what an addition he has been. Could you even imagine the impact he's had in his first season? You know, going back to that conversation, this was, I think, my first conversation uh, post, uh, post him signing the contract. But what amazed me about, about Erling is the confidence. He's got something special, Erling, that confidence with respect. And to be having you know, that conversation post signing your contract with your chairman and saying at the end of that conversation, you know, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to win the Champions League. For, I'm, I'm here to win the Champions League for Manchester City and we're going to win it a year ago is really a testament to the greatness of this player and, and to show you where, this, where, where, where Erling is going. Uh, this is, you know, the beginning uh, and, and, you know, the, the scary part, this is just the beginning for Erling. You can't <laughs> think he might need a few weeks to settle in on no, no. one Community Shield game, which he admits he didn't play well and then on fire. <laughs> well, that's, you know, that's the beauty of Erling is that he's, uh, he's a champion and he's never satisfied. If it's one goal, if it's no goals, if it's one goal, if it's two goals, if it's five goals, even if it's five goals. You know, I remember when he scored five after the game, he was telling me, yeah, but I sh should have scored another three or four. <laughs> uh, genuinely, not joking. Like, yeah. he, in his mind, he's, he knows I sh should have probably scored seven that night or eight that night. <laughs> what a, that's, that's, that's. That's that winning mentality. That's that winning recipe, which you know is, is the intangible. That's the intangible, the anomaly, that that makes you great. And uh, and and in Erling, I think this club now, uh, we have we have an uh, an unbelievable, unbelievable player. And of course, he, he didn't go to the World Cup, but sixteen others did. Um, I mean, one, how did that make you feel? And I guess a special mention for Alvarez, who has now at, the t at his tender age won everything there is to win in, in world football. Listen, I think for for uh, for our club to have uh, that number of players uh, play in the World Cup, I think is a uh, is a source of pride. I think for uh, for the whole um, for the whole organization, and they represented us well, all of them. I think all went to the World Cup, had great uh, performances, uh, and then you have, of course, uh, we have our World Cup winner uh, in Alvarez, and, and Alvarez again another amazing young man. Uh, he comes in and, and you look at what he's achieved in this club already. But beyond that, what he's achieved professionally over the last 12 months, it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. But again, humble. Humble, hard worker, uh, wants to constantly improve. And, and that's the mentality of, that you want in, in, uh, in, in a, in a young, uh, uh, young champion. When you talk of humble, one name comes to mind, and that's Ilkay Gundogan. What a season it's been for him. Can you, um, can you say a few words about how incredible he has been as the leader of this team? Listen, Ilkay has is, is been tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Uh, he is, I mean, as our captain, to be the captain of this club uh, in this historic treble, lifting the Premier League first and then the FA Cup and then last night the, the Champions League, he will go down, he will go down in, in, in the full core. Of, of Manchester City forever. He has been an incredible, you know, the first signing uh, of Pep to, to Manchester City. He started off, uh, you know, I remember him when he came in, always, you know, Pep, he's a captain, he is a captain. Uh, and he's, he's, he's a representation of this club in terms of hard work, commitment always, humbleness, winning mentality. And when you need him, when you need him in the big games, he's always there. And I hope, there's more chapters to that legacy. Um, obviously, Ilkay has to make big life decisions for him. But in the event, we're not fully understandable. Uh, we always have to respect uh, our players, their wishes. We actually operate with quite a small men's first team squad. Is that 
by design? Is that Pep's choice? Is that what he wants to do? And then bring the youth players through. We have a high quality small squad, but it, but it's not but it's not what I think is the perception, which is that we operate with a with a huge squad. That that is not the case, uh, and that's also something that we've been pretty consistent on over the last couple of years. I think our manager uh, prefers to work with a smaller group, and I think here it's important to uh, to note and thank a very you know, I talk about un unheralded heroes, our medical team, our medical team and physios. They have been phenomenal. And they are such a critical component to the success and to your question in terms of the size of the squad. I mean, we came into the Champions League final yesterday with a fully fit squad. And if you look at in a year where there's a World Cup, in a year when we were competing in every single competition with a relatively small squad, if you look at almost every important game, we arrived almost with a full, fully fit squad. The, the psychology of the team of accepting that uh, a rotation policy and you know, accepting this is not a fixed starting 11, this is a group, and this group, and this squad, this small squad, does it all together, and we're, everybody has a, a role to play. So I guess you can't even have footballing Nirvana at the moment, recognized as the biggest brand in the world, all the major silverware in mm. the in the trophy cabinet. I mean, from a chairman's point of view, it, surely it doesn't get any better than that, does it? It does. I can see how it does better. Get get oh, get, right. get better. I, it, it always it always can get better. Um, I think we are in an incredible place, and I am deeply humbled on behalf of everyone associated with this group, with, with with this club, of what's been achieved. The ongoing case with the Premier League, in terms of. That what are your what are your views on the charges, the timing of them, the number of them? Are you happy to talk about them? So obviously I can't talk about them, uh, unfortunately, uh, for um, uh, legal reasons. What I would typically do is always comment after. So I think we're going to go through. We're going through the legal process, uh, and these are proceedings that you know, you know take whatever time they take, and uh, and when we're done. We'll have a conversation. I'll give you my very blunt <laughs> views. I, I promise I'll, you that. I'll I have I'll, very strong views on that, but I, sure, I am I'm going to be sure. unfortunately very restrained today. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, I understand that fully, but I mean, surely you've got a view on the way the club is being, not the word, characterized uh, in, the wake of the, in the wake of the charges. Yes, of course. I mean, that's, that's very frustrating because it, it takes... It takes so much from the great work that's happening in this club. And it's happening not just on the football pitch. The football pitch, we talked about it. Uh, what these uh, players have achieved this year, uh, the treble, is, is incredible. And, and, that, and you know, I hope people uh, focus and, and, and judge them for their football and what they're achieving on the pitch and what they're achieving uh, in every competition they're in. That, that's, that's the reality. Uh, the club as a whole is well run, is very well run. Today, you know, the value of this, uh, of this group is over $6 billion. We've created so much value. We've brought in world-class investors in this. Why? Because we have a commercial machine here uh, that is one of the best in the world. Our executives are being targeted by the best teams in the world, always, by the way is a credit to us. I respect that. People appreciate we are producing not just the best talent on the pitch, not just the best talent in the academies, not just the best talent in the group, but we're producing some of the best executives in the world, some of the best scouts in the world, some of the best coaching uh, staff in the world. And that's a testament to, I think, the great work that this group is doing. We're the number one football brand in the world. Uh, these are the facts. These are the facts. The club generates, I think, tremendous revenue. You look at our sales in terms of what we produce, in terms from our academy, from our first team. I mean, look at last year. I mean, look at our net spend figures. I mean, I, you know, we can go in for half an hour right now with me just giving you data in terms of net spend over the last season, net spend over the last three years, over the last five years, over the last 10 years. Look at every single one of them and, and just look at these as the facts and compare us to our competition. And then, you know, you know people, will throw at us, you're the biggest spenders, you have the biggest squad. Again, I wish people can just 
pause and, and ask the question and get the facts and then comment. You've got that twinkle in your eye now. Of course, yeah. of course. <laughs> we have so much more to achieve. And, um, and the challenge continues and the journey continues and, and, and hopefully next year we'll be able to produce another special year. Everyone knows the owners and yourself never stand still. And the next is a, off the pitch is a big stadium revamp expanding the North Stand and an entertainment area. How excited about that? And what can, what can you tell us about what's going to be there? It's very exciting. It's very exciting. We've released and unveiled uh, our plans uh, for the development. Every year, there's always something new. Every year, because there's, there's always a need to improve and evolve and grow. We don't stand still. We never stood still. The Etihad, we started somewhere, and every, every couple of years, we will do something, uh, whether it's the tunnel club, uh, whether it's the new stands, whether it's the, uh, the seating. Uh, and now we're going to have uh, a wonderful, wonderful development around it that's going to just enhance the whole area. Uh, it's going to be great for the fans and it's going to bring, I think, positive revenue for the club. We're always in growth mode. We're never in contentment and, and pause and let's just you know, milk the asset because this is about building value and growing value. And it's about reinvesting cons consistently uh, into this club. It's about redeveloping the Etihad. It's about building the CFA. It's about building a stadium in, in New York. Uh, it's about building an academy in Girona. Uh, it's about building an academy in Palermo. It's about investing in a club in, in Brazil, in Bahia, and, and, and taking it to win, hopefully, uh, and, and compete at the highest level in, in South America. It's always about growth, and it's always about what's the next best thing and it's all it was about creating and building true value for this uh, for this great, great group um first full summer tour mm. for a while mm. with covid and major championships how important career in japan are on the itinerary how important is it that you know the club goes to these places and and spreads the word not just for manchester city i guess but for you know the premier league uefa every, everyone all the trophies will be will be there of course it's, it's great for the club and, and it's, gr it's great for the brand of this club and our fan base that is now global. We are Mancunian at heart, but now we are global also. And if you look at the club when we did our tour last, last summer and we were in the United States, and I remember, I think we were playing a game in, uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And if you look at the number of fans, the Manchester City fans, in that stadium, uh, I think it was 80,000, uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, it just showed, showed us where Manchester City is today in the world of sports, not just the world of football, in the world of sports. This summer, we're gonna to go to Japan. We're gonna to go to Korea. Incredible markets, but more importantly, incredible fans that love football, that love this club, and, and, and are helping growing our fan base to hopefully becoming one of the largest fan bases in the world. And you talk about legacy and club history, and I know it's very important to you. Um, and we're set to unveil another statue, I understand, with uh, Colin Bell, Francis Lee, and, and Mike Summerby. What, what, have, you, have you seen it? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, how important is it to remember those guys? You know, you said the journey started, yeah. you know, with David Silver and Aguero, and, but the journey before that, these guys were at the center of that. I've seen the statue, and uh, obviously I've been very involved in this because it's, um, it's something that is very personal for me. Um, you have to recognize greatness and you have to, you know, recognize incredible people that have contributed to what we have today. We have a responsibility and I think as caretakers of this great club. And while obviously the statues that have been built so far has been, have recognized the modern day heroes of Manchester City. What this new statue is going to give is, is, is something that I think every city fan uh, I think truly appreciates, which is the great history of this club. And it's represented with, uh, with Francis, Colin and, and Mike. And, and having them together uh, in a, uh, hopefully, a, a magnificent piece of art, uh, I think is, is the least we can do for what they've done and, and, and really leaving that everlasting legacy always there to remember what, what was, that this club has, has an incredible history. And of course, Mike, got his OBE from mm. Prince William this summer. He was instrumental in calming people down last night, I understand. Mm. You know, he was, uh, you know, calm down, we're doing okay. I mean, he is a special sort of human being, isn't he? He is. 
such an important part of, of, of this club uh, in every possible way. I, am, um, I have deep gratitude for, for Mike and, and his role um, and his friendship. And uh, I, I know this year has been you know, so special for him in every possible way. To have him you know, be with me yesterday uh, at the end of that game, um, I think was very, very special. That's the beauty of City, isn't it? And for people who don't understand the way the club works, everyone who's played a part in their history is always welcome back. Gail Clichy was there last yeah. night. Like I say, Fernandinho was, was there last night. Carlos Tevez, Sergio Aguero were there last night. They don't lose that connection, do they? And it's the same for people who are not superstars. Absolutely. I mean, yesterday we had all these great players that have, that have um, contributed so much to this club. They they have a sense of ownership themselves and, and they have a sense of pride themselves. They were winning yesterday. Uh, but it's not just them, by, by the way. It's also, I can tell you, there were so many executives, people that worked for us and have left, that have come again yesterday. Uh, people that have worked for us 15 years ago, 10 years ago. People that have just left us maybe a year ago. Everybody is, you know, I think we have this in this club, a sense that you're always going to be part of this, and uh, you're, you're, you could be still here, or you could move on to another uh, challenge. But we will never forget, and we will always appreciate. And um, and it was great seeing so many people from the past yesterday. And um, if we could just move to the academy and the emergence of Rico Lewis, who was as happy as anyone last night. How impressed with his seamless arrival on onto the big stage? And you know, I mean. No one dreamt he would have probably played as many times as he did. I think he played 14 times this season. Mm. Well, you know, you said it. We have, a, we have a small group in terms of the squad. But also we have shown in our academy uh, how we have produced the best team in England uh, or the best teams in England over the last five, six years consistently. So... We are, the talent is there. We have great players, great coaching staff, and that's producing players like Rico Lewis, like Cole Palmer, and many others. Uh, and, and we have a, a first-team coach in, uh, in Pep uh, Guardiola that gives young talent a chance, that, is, that has the courage and the open-mindedness to bring them in, give them the opportunity and uh, and you have then great examples like Rico Lewis at 18 uh, he's given the opportunity and he grasps it and um, and I'm very happy for him I'm, but I'm you know I'm delighted for Rico but I'm even more delighted for the academy because it's showing us consistently that we are producing that sort of talent and then we have a pathway for them the ones that have uh, and that we see have a pathway towards the first team. They get, the, they get the chance, they get the opportunities. I mean, how many players, I mean, look at Phil. Look at Phil Foden coming out from the academy. He's the most decorated player today, probably, in, in English football, at his age, at his age. Look at the minutes he's played and look at the, the evolution, you know, from 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We've been very careful in, in supporting Phil to get him to where he is today. And we'll do the same with Rico, or we'll do the same with Cole, and we'll do the same with all, with all the others. Um, we're surrounded with their trophies too. We've got the yeah. Premier League too and the under-18s trophies here, and they, they keep winning them year after year, just, just like... It's the winning mentality, yeah. and it's that winning mentality that spreads across every team involved in this group. But, but also, it's, it's surely good for English football or, or world football. Of course. I mean, we had players in the Burnley, a player in the Burnley team that came up, two players in the Sheffield United team that have come up. So it's not just Manchester City and the individuals that benefit, but the game benefits from the professionalism and the skill of Manchester City's coaches and, and scheme. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that professionalism, that level of, uh, of development um, and then the carefulness. I mean, we're very careful in how we develop these young players. Uh, and that's respected by the entire industry, uh, which is why they're being targeted. You know, today, why, why is everybody scouting city players? Uh, well, they're good, of course, but it's not just because they're good. It's because they know we have a philosophy, uh, we have a system, uh, we have a track record uh, of producing incredible talented players, champions, and, uh, and that, you know, some, some players end up obviously with us in the, in the first team, others end up going and, and having great careers.
So when we talk about trebles, there's not more than one treble in the club this season. So the club has now won PL titles at first team level, EDS and under 18 level. I've won the top trophies in those three competitions for three years running each, three trebles. So think of that for, for a moment. A triple treble across all levels uh, or most levels of, uh, of, uh, of a professional football uh, within a club. It's, uh, I mean, this says the story. This says it all. It says it all about what we've been saying, which is about how our academy continues to produce and to match what we're doing at the first team level. And here, you know, the triple treble shows you this is across the board and uh, I think is, is a testament to uh, everyone in this academy we have. Uh, we have an incredible academy. Uh, we are producing the best football in England. We're the producing the best talent in England and we're doing it consistently and we're doing it hand in hand with the first team, which is kind of the, I would say the essence of day one when we, when we, when we built CFA was how to keep the academy and the first team all in the same place and create that continuity and that togetherness. And if we talk about consistency and apply that to the women's game, no silverware for them this year, but you know, a long unbeaten run in the season, fourth place, uh, development of some young talent. Where, where do you see the, the women's team at the moment and the, and the game's progress as a whole on the women's side of things? Well, the women's game has, has, has certainly evolved in a way I didn't expect in, in this speed. Uh, it's really evolved very fast. And um, it is certainly something that we're very focused on. Um, my, my daughter, Lulu, uh, reminds me every day uh, that this, the women's team has to be a focus. She's here with you. Oh, she watches every game. Yeah. She, she doesn't miss a game. And, uh, and that tells me, I think it's a, it's a great reminder for me uh, and for all of us that the game is, is, is arrived. The women's game has arrived. It's real. Its fan base is growing. Uh, you're seeing it in, in every game. You're seeing it uh, in the stands. You're seeing it with the, with the quality of the football. Uh, our, our women's team has, has always been, again, very consistent, always there, always competitive. I think we will lo look at this season as a, as a positive season uh, in the sense that we were very competitive all the way till the end. We're going to come back. We're going to come back. We're going to support this team. Uh, we have a great manager. We have a great core uh, group of players. Uh, and we have a commitment from the organization uh, to help this group uh, continue to grow, continue to improve and, and, and compete and win, uh, as was with every single uh, team within, within, the, within the group. And it's not really fair to pick one player out that I'm going to because the women's equivalent of Erling Haaland would be Bunny Shaw, yeah. who's... Uh, had a remarkable season, breaking Mark. records of her own. How impressed are you when you... Very impressed, very impressed. She's an, an incredible striker. Uh, again, incredible leader within the group um, and, and has played an amazing part of this journey, uh, of, this, of this season. Uh, but but uh, as you said, it's, it's also not just her. It's, it's the group as a whole. Uh, we have a very, very talented group to, to build on. Let's talk about the wider family now, finally, for the final bit of the, the, the chat. It's the CF, CFG, you've spoken quite a lot about it in, during the previous bits of the interview, but can we start in, in the USA? Mm -hmm. New York City sort of came of age, Champions 2021, Eastern Conference Final 2022, and now the stadium projections have been produced, printed, delivered, yeah. shown to people. I mean, that's a momentous moment, isn't it? Finally. I can say here in this, in this case, finally. This has been a very long and agonizing process. Uh, not easy to build a stadium, stadium in, in New York City. Very, very hard. It's very important to have your stadium. You know that in, in any, any team. We've built, I think, a great organization, a great club, a great fan base in New York. And now we're going to give uh, this team a wonderful stadium. How, how will it impact on the community, the fans, you, you've mentioned them, but just the impact of having that stadium and that centre for them? Oh, I mean, it's critical. It's crucial. I mean, today we're playing effectively in, in, in an, you know, another team stadium. And by the way, another team that doesn't play football. 
Uh, we're playing in a baseball stadium. So, of course, uh, I think uh, you know, what we've done, given the constraints, has been, has been incredible. But this team needs its, its stadium, and that will, will add tremendous value to, to the community. Uh, it'll create jobs. Uh, it will create, I think, a home to this, uh, to this great club, and, and that's critical. And magic happened in Melbourne again this season. Mm -hmm. Premiers for the, I think, was it the third straight A-League? Third straight, again. You know, uh, you look at it uh, in, in, a, in a wage-controlled uh, environment, uh, our ability to show consistent success. Uh, just again, is a testament to the, to the management and the philosophy we have as a group. Uh, you know, great team, you know, you know that in any competition, to, to win three in a row and to be there three in a row. Uh, of course, we, we weren't uh, successful in the grand final uh, last week, but, you know, that's, that's football. Um, you, you know, in the finals, finals are, you know, 90 minutes, and uh, it's different than when you're playing a league. In, in a league, inevitably, the best team wins over 38 games, 24 games, whatever the number of games. Uh, most of the time, the best team wins. In a final, it's 90 minutes. <laughs> sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. And when it does, it's great. Uh, and when it doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, Melbourne, unfortunately, over the season, were the most consistent team. But in the grand final, they weren't successful. We've talked about the success in the group in Melbourne and, and New York City and the excitement there. But it's not always a bed of roses, is it? Owning 12 or 13 football clubs is going to be some disappointments along the way. How do you characterize some of the disappointments this, this campaign? Of course. I mean, it's, it's, it's part of football. Uh, football is about winning and it's also about losing. Uh, and, and in both cases, uh, it's how you behave after you win and how you behave after you lose. And when you have 13 clubs and when you're operating all over the world, you're going to have, in many instances, challenges. I mean, it's, you know, listen, we're always dealing with a challenge here or there. Uh, look at Girona as an example. We invested in Girona. We, we, we took the, cl the club from the, you know, from the second division, uh, La Liga 2, to La Liga. And then we got uh, relegated. Um, that was a big challenge for us. But guess what? We, we, we dissected the issue. We analyzed it. We did what we needed to do to fix the challenges. And then, you know, Girona went back to the first division uh, through hard work and, and a well-planned and thoughtful approach. And now they're a solid team in, in La Liga. So there's going to be ups and downs. Uh, trois. Uh, we invested in Trois, we took it to uh, the first division, and now they, 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 this season they've had a you know, very disappointing season and they've got relegated. It is what it is. It's a challenge. We'll deal with it. We'll figure out what went wrong over there. We'll put a plan and we'll get the, we'll the, club, we'll get the club back up and running. It's, it's part of the game. And, uh, and you know, whenever there's a step back, uh, it happens. Uh, but then you look at the next step forward and the two steps after that. Mumbai has been a great story. We win. We won the league, then we weren't, then we didn't. Yokohama, uh, Melbourne, uh, you know, wherever we are in the world. Montevideo has been, a, has been challenged also. So you deal with that. Uh, and it's part of the business and it's part of the football. I don't think it's a major surprise that other group, there are other groups trying to do what we do and have done so successfully. Can you just run us through the rest of the acquisition in Brazil you mentioned uh, briefly and and, pl and plans for CFG? So we continue to grow. We continue to grow in a very thoughtful manner. Uh, last summer, uh, Palermo joined uh, the group. Palermo, again, great history, uh, great legacy, great region, great club, difficult few years. And, and, and we came in, um, and now, you know, pa pa Palermo has gone from Serie C, Serie C, the third division, to Serie B. And uh, again, you, and always, I think we have a blueprint of what we do. Uh, we support the club, we put the management, we get the, uh, the academy in place, we put the infrastructure in place, and then the team grows. And, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't expect Palermo very soon, uh, hopefully in Serie A. Uh, so, and Palermo, again, is a big team. It's a big club. Uh, a lot of aspirations we have for, for Palermo. Uh, latest acquisition is, uh, is in Brazil. Uh, Brazil is obviously where all the talent, the best talent in the world, is coming out of, uh, of, of Brazil. And to have now ownership in, in a great club in Bahia, again, similar to the Palermo story, in the sense that great history, but modern in the last couple of years, a challenged uh, history. We've come in, 
and now we're going to support the team uh, as it goes up uh, the ladder and goes back to uh, the great position uh, as a one of the best teams in Brazil. It fits perfectly within our group and of course in one of the most uh, important uh, countries in the world, uh, in Brazil. So this is going to be uh, another very big club within the group uh, and a club we're going to be spending a lot of time and focus uh, in developing. Um, any others on the, in the part one? It's always about growth and it's about you grow, you pause, you get things in order and then you start the next step. And it's one step at a time, one step. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep going and we're going to keep in, uh, investing and we're going to keep growing value and, and we're going to keep bringing uh, happiness to every community and every club we have in the world and hopefully we'll keep bringing success in every, uh, in every club and team we have around the world. It's been, a, it's been a great journey over the last 15 years, uh, but I'm excited about the future, uh, and it's about now the next 10, 15 years too.